Hello everyone, how's it going? Hope you're on a great day, morning, evening, afternoon, where you are. I want to apologise for I'm not doing any videos for a while. I've been having a lot of things to deal with, a lot of stuff on my mind, but life. But I'll be fine. I'll figure things out one day. But I was going to do a video on Christmas Day, a Christmas theme video, before um, I make dinner and do everything else I'm going to do Christmas. I hope you enjoyed the video. This one's about um, Scottish history. I know some of Scottish history, but I don't really know how whole detail that stuff. So hopefully this video will understand about, that helped me understand about some of the stuff that um, Scottish history is about. So let's see. This was banned for a time. Cool. There's a bit of an intro, so I'll just... It has often been questioned why Scots celebrate Hogmanay more than Christmas. Yeah, I know... I know Hogmanay is um the new year, right? It's Hogmanay's new year. I don't know. I know that. The answer is Christmas was banned for it's a what time Scottish, um, and frowned no. upon by the Scottish Presbyterian Church what? for over four hundred years. Oh. It was I know, not I know until it's banned. the middle of the twentieth century Christmas celebrations truly returned to the calendar. Yeah, because. I know it was banned for a while because the church, um, church of Scotland and stuff like that. But I didn't know the whole detail exactly why, but it explains it more. But also, no, um, when you're on um, Christmas Day or Christmas return to the calendar, you didn't really have Boxing Day until like later on because you followed on towards like what other countries do, like England, Canada. I think Canada still celebrate Boxing Day, I'm pretty sure. I know America doesn't celebrate Boxing Day or have a, a, have a day called Boxing Day. But I know um, Scotland, they only had it returned to Canada like a little bit after or during that time. But um, do you want Boxing Day? Is anyone, I mean, this is just on the same subject, but what Boxing Day is? Anyone when they were younger kind of um always think Boxing Day? Like, not now, obviously. But I mean, did you ever think Boxing Day was just do a boxing? Because when I was younger, I always always think that, and I'm like, what? But then, as soon as I when I got older, I was like, what the hell was I thinking back then? <laughs> but I know um, well Boxing Day. There's obviously a lot of meaning of Boxing Day, but Boxing Day generally means obviously a day that people chuck the rubbish away from, like... Might mean differently, you know, got in that, but I mean... Generally, from what I've known, um, Boxing Day is what we can chuck all the wrap and paper away and all the like, rubbish away on the next day. But then, some people usually do it on Christmas Day anyway, so... But, yeah, that's my weird childhood story that like I always thought um boxing day was to do boxing but then I kind of yeah I don't know if anyone else had that. I know a few people that I know have said that they thought it was that but come to think of it nowadays I'm like Yeah <laughs> But again it's funny I guess in olden times the Picts celebrated the winter solstice, the longest night of the year, with a log. 21st of December, the winter solstice, an old woman. Longest of the year. As it burned, it was supposed to rid them of bad luck. Ah. They also introduced the lighting of candles, which were placed at their windows. Yeah, I know about that. In later years, the pagans and druids continued this winter celebration. Is nice. It was also the time when they asked their ancient gods to return the sun to them. They used to scour the countryside for greenery and took it into their homes. And this is where trees and decorations began. They would bring in an evergreen which symbolised life and decorate it. Mistletoe, taken from the oak tree, was believed to bring fertility and maybe where kissing under the mistletoe hails from. 
All right, so I mean, I thought like obviously other countries celebrate Christmas. I've been in Scotland for that like brief, well, I say brief, that four hundred years time, but I didn't. Does that mean Scotland actually made the whole kissing under the mistletoe sort of thing? I mean, I've, personally, I've never been, actually ever been kissed under the mistletoe. I don't know, I don't know, it's just a bit cheesy, but it's probably, probably going to be a good mind experience in once in life. But, but anyway, that means Scotland's actually um, the creators of the kissing under mistletoe um, thing, because I thought it was more like, um, I don't know, for like Scandinavian, or well, I suppose as a sort of some ties, a lot of Viking sort of stuff between Scotland and Norway, I suppose it does make sense. But I thought it was like someone like Scandinavian, not like countries, or maybe like Canada, it probably like started that sort of thing. But I guess, I guess it makes sense because, you know, Scotland, they kind of bring it back and they sort of reinvent themselves. So, I mean, I guess. I guess it kind of does make sense if they if they did, but interesting. They built a fire in their houses and burned the Yule log, as at that time. A yeah, sorry, sorry, keep pausing. Yule log as well. I don't know about Yule because obviously, um, there was a log and they started burning it. I know that, but then I guess that's sort of another thing where um those chocolate yule log come um I know um other countries have it, I know like uh, England, Scotland, Wales, and sort of Northern Ireland. So sort of, I'm not sure if Ireland do, but I know we have like a chocolate log. It's like a Swiss roll with like Christmassy sort of effects with like obviously like dusted icing on top or something to get like a chocolate orangey type one or there's all sorts of different ones, but it was like a Yule log's basically like a sort of festive version of a normal Swiss roll, but they're quite nice actually. I've actually got one, personally. I'll eat that later. Probably would have ate it by the time this video's actually um, been released, but I mean, you know. But yeah, I've got chocolate orange sort of one, it's been quite nice. But yeah. I know it's, I don't know if that actually, like, that's how your logs come from, like the chocolate, like Swiss roll thing, come from that, but where Scottish had that Yule time. A year was known as Yule, taken from the Old Norse, meaning midwinter. Midwinter. The log was hmm. specially chosen and placed on the dying embers of the old fire. Hmm. Those charred remains were thought to bring protection to the house throughout the year. Ah. The Protestant Reformation took place in the 16th century, and since 1583, the Church of Scotland... Oh, yeah. But the Yule Log as well, I'm guessing it actually was made in Scotland as well, or designed. Sorry. <laughs> Excuse me. I'll leave that in. That was kind of um, I just a more facial feet um facial expression. I thought as kind of weird, but I mean. Protestant <laughs> Reformation. Maybe a bit of editing, I guess. Sixteenth century, and since 1583, the Church of Scotland frowned upon Yuletide celebrations, seeing it as being too closely associated with Roman Catholic traditions, stating the celebrations. But they not celebrate both the same, don't they? In the Bible. I don't know. I know um, the Bible is in different. In 1640, an act was passed in the like Scottish stuff. Parliament banning the celebration, and even mincemeat pies were banished from the table. Yeah, that's the that's the thing about mincemeat pies, or mince pies as we call them now. But mince pies, I kind of, I don't know. I'm kind of like I know I'm obviously America. I don't know what mince pies are. Probably Canada doesn't either. Play, I don't know Australia do them, but or New Zealand, but mint like like mince. They use my like I have mince meat in them, but I mean, 
they don't have mince meat because it's basically like spice sort of spice sort of fruit, like you know, got like raisins, sultanas, and don't like spices and stuff, like sweet spices, not actual spices like paprika or things like that. But they always kind of um. They always say like it's mint, like you haven't gone to the shop and get a jar it's like minced meat, but it's not minced meat. It's just fruit. It always kind of um threw me off. But I mean, I like mince pies. I mean, mince pies are nice, nice and fruity. You know, nice and custard, nice and cream. Or even on their own, or even just you know, hot or cold. Yeah, I've always loved mince pies. So I'm get I'm guessing they're from Scotland as well, from what I can tell. Does everything come from Scotland? It seems like everything just comes from Scotland, to be honest. Much more, the more I've learned from like this, I mean, I've, um, not just a video, but I mean, after Scotland, I've learned a, a lot of stuff that I didn't know generally comes from Scotland. It's like Scotland are creators of practically everything. I mean, obviously, I'm getting, they're not the creators of Christmas, but they've added more stuff to it, like mince pies and the, um, Yule log and I'm guessing mistletoe as well. I mean, it seems like all those were just created by Scotland, but it's good. I mean, they're great things. So, if you did, if Scotland did create all those, thanks, Scotland. Really appreciate it. They're great. Continue all the creating things. Love it. There are records of people who continued to celebrate being arrested for breaking the law. Really? It was not until the oh, okay. 1980s the act was repealed. During the Victorian period, there was somewhat of a revival thanks to Prince Albert and German customs becoming popular. But Hogmanay remained a celebration of choice. It was only in 1958 that Christmas became an official festive holiday and not until 1974, ah. when Boxing Day followed suit. However, Hogmanay and New Year's Day remain the main celebrations across the country, and is probably the reason why 2nd January is also a public holiday in Scotland. Yeah, because I know, um, well, sometimes like, England does get a bank holiday on the 2nd. That's obviously if... Um, I think it's if the Sunday or the Saturday is um is like New Year's Day, so then the Monday will be a bank holiday as well. But then if it's not, then it will just continue as a new day. But the second in Scotland is actually a public holiday. I know that because obviously. That, but then we have the same thing until Christmas. But um, sometimes if there's if the weekend is like Christmas, like if Christmas Day is on Sunday, or like Sunday, if Sunday's a Boxing Day, we get like a special bank holiday on the twenty seventh after Boxing Day, which would be like a Tuesday. Or if um Sunday is on Boxing Day, then Monday and Tuesday. Will both be bank holidays. I'm not sure that's the same for Scotland. I'm pretty sure that might be the same for Scotland as well. But I know I'm um, about the um second of January, but I mean we only have that once in a blue moon if like it lands on a certain day. But yours is just, you know, permanently second, no matter what. So it's understandable though, because obviously we're saying mahogany. More Albert's than, German influence uh, is still strong today, with putting up I know Christmas still quite big, like, getting, but it's actually quite Albert. big in Scotland as well. Oh, I missed that bit I was talking. Also, with putting up the tree, sending cards, and advent calendars. Advent calendars? I don't mind those. Edinburgh also boasts the annual German market at Princess Street Gardens, with stalls selling Christmas decorations. I'm guessing you're, because I know the Christmas markets in England, or especially my city, are okay that they seem to be getting bigger every year and there are stuff there but i'm guessing the scottish ones maybe a lot more bigger and more look more festive because i've seen some videos on youtube i'm exact like 
like some walking tours and stuff, some of the stuff like Edinburgh and Glasgow and Aberdeen. A lot of those Christmas markets I've seen do look a lot bigger and somewhat better than the ones I've seen, especially in my city. I mean, don't get me wrong, some of, the, some of the stuff in the Christmas market is still pretty good, but quite pricey. But, you know, the ones in, I've seen in Scotland kind of look much more bigger. So, be nice to probably like to see it as well. Gifts, blue vine, hot chocolate. Bratwurst, Dave cooking, what's that cooking? And what? other traditional what? Sorry. decorations. Yeah. Gifts, blue vine, hot blue chocolate, vine. Bratwurst, mm. Dave cooking, Apfel cooking, and other traditional German food and drink. Oh, German. Oh, yeah. Oh, traditional. Yes, yeah, makes sense. Houses are decorated. I guess there's like different varieties as well because we get bath bombs as well. Cheeses and stuff. A wreath is sometimes placed on the front doors, and an advent candle is used to count down the days of Christmas itself. Or well, advent calendars, Children something like are often given advent calendars, as are chocolate. pet cats and dogs. I've heard of like advent calendars of pet cats and dogs, but I've never really understood it, but I guess, each sure, I guess. I mean, I guess if you like... Like you, well, I guess you um like want your pets to get some extra treat like beforehand, but I suppose far enough. But yeah, I like the I remember the chocolate and candles. I mean, you get like a countdown of days. But these do up to twenty. These got twenty five days on different candles. I don't know if you have that in Scotland still, but these got twenty five days on candles. If teams get to like like Christmas Day, you get a lot a lot bigger one. But they only got to twenty four now. Apparently, they only got to Christmas Eve. So. Not a bit sad, but they could have left it like up to Christmas Day, not the first to Christmas Day, but it's fine. But it's nice so you get a bit of chocolate in there, like count down the days and you know, sometimes you get a pro proper thin, just paper ones for the pictures and stuff, you know, how many days are left or a picture of like Santa Claus or a Christmas tree or snowman, gingerbread man, whatever, you know, but it's it's pretty good. I guess that was mean I'm um, creating Scott as well, right? Apple candles. A mince pie and a glass of milk or whiskey, while a carrot is placed next to it for the reindeer. Stockings are placed near the fire, and at eleven thirty that night, churches and chapels open their doors for the Christmas Eve service. Yeah, a lot of places do that in um, England as well. There are services on Christmas Day, and it is traditional to have a walk. At some point, traditional to walk. I don't actually dinner, traditionally consist of go to any that bit. in Scotland, but turkey has taken over in the last six decades or so, and is served with roast potatoes and Brussels sprouts. Yeah, turkey's been obviously a big thing in it. I don't personally. Well, I don't personally. I, is served with roast potatoes you know. and Brussels sprouts, along with pigs and blankets. Stuffing and a sauce such as cranberry or a good yeah. Those of you don't those of you from America don't know what um pigs and blankets is. You might know, but I'm not sure. But pigs and blankets is like sausages wrapped in bacon. I know that. I mean, you know, just so you know, there's different um varieties of Christmas dinner that people have, but that's generally every traditional thing that they have. But in I know Scotland kind of took that on a bit more later. Certain things, pink and blankets, probably, probably about the same time. But Scotland took it on a bit later. But most of the stuff's been around in England a little bit longer because obviously a Scottish band of that stuff kind of table things like that. I don't know. Sauce, such as cranberry, cranberry sauce is nice. Christmas chutney. Yeah, Christmas chutney, cranberry sauce, sweet. Some people have like mint sauce, mint sauce, not mince, sorry. Mint sauce. Okay, it's basically like just well, that's what it is is that the the herb mint, but like in a like a sauce based format, and obviously some people have like apple sauce and stuff like that. But yeah, chutney and some people Christmas have chutney as well. I like chutney. Trifle follows, although trifle. Mrs. Fetis Christmas pudding, named after the wife of William Fetis, founder of Fetis College in Edinburgh, is lighter than the traditional heavy one. 
I know I'm Scotland to have like a Christmas like festive trifle, which is their traditional. First of all, the Christmas one. cake and mince pies are served, or left on the table for people to help themselves. And a Christmas pudding you have in um America, America Christmas pudding you have um in Scotland. Um, we don't really have that version. But I know you have the plum. You have a plum, um, plum one. I've never really seen that anywhere. I'm guessing it's just like a scotch thing because I've never seen it. But I'm not a big fan of normal crisp pudding. I've never really sort of been a big fan of that. But the plum one seems kind of nice. So might be worth a try or a different, like, like a variation of that. But I guess that's another thing where the sugar plum fairy sort of thing come from as well. I don't know. But I'm guessing that's not relevant. But I mean, plum just kind of makes me think about it. But I think it's quite nice, though, the uh, crisp plum pudding instead of just normal crisp pudding. Because I've never been a big fan of the normal one myself. Crackers are pulled, jokes Crackers pulled, forward. and nice. toasts are done. And at three o'clock. Those, those crisp crackers, I mean, no, well, I'm pretty sure it's the same Scott, but those crisp crackers, you, when you put them, obviously, you, know, you get someone over and they just pour it like that. Those Christmas, Christmas crackers, though. I don't have jokes in that. They're just so cheesy. I mean, it's the same with penguin bars, you know, you get the jokes on it, it's just pretty cheesy. But I guess it just gives a bit of a giggle in, oh, for fuck's sake. Followed usually by a Christmas film. Christmas films, the Christmas songs. The last Christmas Day football matches in Scotland took place in 1976, where games were played between Clydebank and St Mirren and Alloa played Cowden Beef. Yeah, because now, now it's matches. On Boxing Day. Yeah. With further games on New Year's Day. Boxing yeah. Day, or St that. Stephen's Day, is also traditionally the day when the sales begin in the shops. But in days gone by, boxes were prepared by the local landowners containing various items from food to cloth which were given to the estate workers, hence the name, Boxing Day. Yeah, because that's been a thing for a while. I mean, I know Scotland only took on... Country, Boxing Day. I know Boxing Day generally wasn't really a Scottish thing because they took it on, like she said in the early video, took it on more later than other countries did. So I can't understand that. But it is more or less the same for what it generally is. Or just like throwing the boxes and like chucking them away after Christmas Day as well. It's known as Sweetie Scondy. When dried Sweetie Scondy? Yeah. Spices were yeah. added to the usual homemade bread, generally supplied by the local landowner. Oh. These are just some of Scotland's Christmas traditions. Interesting. That looks amazing. I mean, where is that? Alright, just pause it a bit. Where is that? That looks, that looks really nice. I don't know, it must be in Scotland, right? Could you show my Scottish video? But that's actually quite nice. Um, place. Oh, is that the video? Okay. That's a good video. Case of drunk chickens. Thanks for watching. All right. Right, that was actually a good video, some Scotland's history, give it a like. Yeah, but if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Um, I really enjoyed that video myself, but if you like the video, like I say, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And hit the notification bell and Hopefully I'll see you next videos. And also hope you have a great Christmas, great new year, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you. And I guess I can do it this way. Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. Take care everyone.